Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and I'm so glad you're here. Okay, I'm so excited you guys. Today we are making a Beetlejuice tumbler and I'm going to start off by laying down some painter's tape to make stripes. You wanna start with just one piece, lay down another next to it as a spacer, lay down another piece, pick up the spacer and continue on. And I do use sublimation tumblers. They're already white, so less work for me. I sand them. All right, we're gonna use some black acrylic paint and we are going to stripe about three quarters of the way up. And you'll see at the end, I drag the dry paintbrush. Just like that. I was gonna call them like wispies, but I think I'm gonna call them tentacles. That's a bit more creepy. I like it. You wanna make sure you are pouncing at first so that you get minimal bleed underneath your tape lines. Okay, and we are going to put a second coat on here. And I was going to do a gradient. Now, I decided that it looked really cool when I dragged my paintbrush. Uh, so I did that instead of the black to white gradient. And we're removing the tape. And then we're going to retape what we just painted. I did seal this uh, with a spray sealer. So you want to do that first so you don't pull the paint up. So we're just gonna go ahead and cover our existing stripes. You don't even have to go all the way up. You just need to basically cover the white part. So you'll see that's as far as I go. Now, one thing to mention, when you do end up um, using one inch painter's tape, you end up with one stripe that's smaller. You can see it right there. We fixed that later, not to worry. Okay, and you're gonna start from the opposite side, do the same thing, drag out and make those tentacles. I also go ahead and I paint the bottom of the tumbler. I decided I wanted that to be uh, all black. I will be glittering it later. So, this is where that one stripe is sort of not the correct size. Um, the good news is because the black runs into the black, we can fix it that way. So once I pull the tape up, I just go ahead and uh, fill in. All right, and I did get some bleed through of the black paint. So I go ahead and go in with a Posca pen. Um, most of the spots are just fine. No one would have noticed it but I noticed it, so I wanted to fix it. There were a few really big ones, but mostly it was all right. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and tape off one set of those stripes, and we are going to glitter. I'm using glitter glue, and I'm using a beautiful holographic chunky mix. This is from Mr. Nola's. Um, and they don't have it anymore, so I did put a comparable glitter in uh, the description. So you just give it a nice even coat. And then when I get to the little tentacles, I go sideways, you can see here with the paintbrush. I didn't want it to be solid glitter, I wanted it to kind of trail off just like the little tentacles do. and you'll just keep doing that all the way around the cup and you'll wanna let that dry. It takes about half an hour. You do wanna go in and also seal the glitter after all is said and done. Um, I just use a mixture of the glitter glue and water, about 75% glitter glue, 25% water. Um, for whatever reason this time, it didn't actually keep the glitter from moving 
all the way. I'm not really sure what happened there, but usually that works really well. Okay, and I went ahead and used a chip brush and I brushed the heck out of that glitter once it was dried. Um, and then I also wrapped it in some parchment paper and pressed the glitter down. So as a result, it's nice and flat and I don't have to use a ton of epoxy. I think I probably only used about 15 milliliters here and that was plenty. But you can see on some of the white parts, the glitter did travel. I just used my gloved finger to kind of uh, take those off. I didn't care about the smaller ones. I just wanted to make sure the bigger bits uh, did not end up on the white part. There I am, popping bubbles. And I'm gonna let that spin for about four hours and it'll be all ready to go since it's speed dry epoxy. All right, here's the sandworm. I decided to make it out of polymer clay. I've never fashioned anything out of polymer clay by hand. I have used molds. Um, if you look at my Easter tumbler video, you'll see where I used molds with that polymer clay but here I just did it by hand and it's a little tricky I'm sure once I get the hang of it it'll be uh, much easier but I had to add some more clay because the head wasn't quite the right shape um, but it ended up being fine And as my many crafter friends across the pond say, this was a bit fiddly. So I ended up messing with it and messing with it and messing with it, trying to get it perfect. Um, and again, once I get better at it, I'll know how to sort of smooth things out in a better way, I'm sure. But it did take me forever. And now I'm making the inner head, you can kind of see the picture I'm going off of there. And I do need to make teeth for this guy, both of his mouths. So you'll see how I managed to do that a little bit later on. And I'm just shaping it a bit now and I'll go ahead and make the tongue. But you'll see the thicker part of the head right before the mouth starts to open, it's not thick enough. So I do go in and add a little bit more clay sort of on the top part and that worked pretty well. He turns out so cute. I end up baking him on this tumbler so that he's shaped the proper way. Now here's my first attempt at pinstriping. I end up doing this three times. You'll see why. Um, I liked this, but it was just too thin. It's nail striping tape. So I do end up using a thicker um, washi tape that's glitter and that doesn't work out so well. So here's the new washi tape. It looks great. And um, yeah, it looked great until I went to seal it with my gloss varnish and the color ran. So I keep trying, hoping I can get it to work properly, but it doesn't work. And I end up having to use alcohol to scrub uh, the pink color off of it. Okay, you can see my sandworm. He's all baked. 
and he's in the correct shape for the tumbler. So now I am going to paint him. This took so long, <laughs> but again, totally worth it. I just popped on a podcast. I really like true crime. So popped on my true crime podcast and just had at it. When I get to the details, I do use uh, the acrylic paints and a nail art brush. They are incredibly small. And um, I use that for pretty much everything except for one part on the mouth. Okay, and he's all set. Now, I did the green lips. I don't know. Do sandworms have lips? I don't think they do. <laughs> I guess it's the outline of the mouth uh, with a paint pen. And now I'm just coloring in the insides of the mouth. Hindsight, I would have done that first and then done the rest of it. But it was fine. I just had some touch-up to do. He looks pretty good. All right, this is my third and final striping attempt. I end up just using my Cricut to cut some purple glitter vinyl. Um, this is the second time I cut it though because Cricut decided it was not going to cut all the way through. I can't remember who it is. One of the Tumblr makers I watch calls it a Cricant and that is so true sometimes. Okay, and I am sealing in those pinstripes with Speed Dry Epoxy. I did pre-seal them with that gloss varnish. You don't want to get any lifting. You've spent all this time on this, this tumbler, and the last thing you want to do is have your pinstripes sticking up at the ends. Here's how I did the teeth. I rolled out polymer clay flat, baked it, and I'm going to cut strips of it and make little triangles for teeth. They're different sizes because the inner mouth is much smaller, so I do it twice. It's kind of satisfying watching all the little triangles get cut. And I'm just checking the size and now I'm starting on the bigger teeth for the outer mouth. Same thing. And what I end up doing is I end up um, attaching these with UV resin. And I just sort of flash cure it for about 10 seconds, tack it in place. And then once I have them all set, I go back and I do a full cure of about 90 seconds. And yes, this went as slowly as it looks like it did. And now I'm making my first decal. I end up redoing this because if you look at that sort of light green color, that is glow vinyl and I did not find out until after I'd finished everything that the entire roll does not actually glow. I don't know what happened. I've never run into this problem with tech wrap vinyl. Uh, their vinyl is fantastic so that was super surprising to me. I cut out the uh, strange word, unusual, and then the little eye out of the same glitter vinyl that I made the pinstripes from. And this is just glossy purple vinyl. Don't ask me why I piled it all on one piece of transfer tape. I don't know why I did that. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> and sorry for my head's appearance. 
Okay, so here I am sort of checking to see where I'm gonna have my sandworm to know where I'm going to place the vinyl. But this is the decal that I actually end up removing. And I have a piece of painter's tape on there. I'm using the hinge method where I tack it down on one side, pull back the, the paper backing a little bit, cut it off, and then I use my squeegee to lay the rest down so I avoid bubbles. And here's the new de decal. You can see that the green is slightly different. And I actually do go and verify this does work. Ta-da! <laughs> and I verified it before I made the decal. So I forgot to record myself making that drip out of, yeah, flash cured resin. Not a great move. So I sanded the crap out of it and I end up putting another drip over it. And here's what I'm using. Glow in the dark powder, white puff paint, and neon green paint. And I'm going to put that little bag of confetti on there as soon as I'm done with the drip. Um, I've had this confetti for well over a year and it is Beetlejuice confetti listed in the description. So, like a genius, I didn't record myself doing this drip either. So I was just showing you that I placed it along the top with my silicone tool and then I would hit the tumbler on my hand in order to make those drips move a little bit further down the tumbler. You don't want to do it too hard because then you'll have drips coming way down the tumbler and you don't want to cover any of the hard work that you did. And you can see my silhouettes on the back. I just used that same glow in the dark vinyl and then I used the plain purple glossy vinyl on the top of it. And I do show you when it's all done. And if you see how puffy that paint is, I'm gonna tell you a secret. After you have done it, hit it with some steam. I just used a little steamer I have for clothes and it puffs up really well. And here she is. I'm so happy. I am so excited. I cannot wait to use this tumbler. It came out so much better than I ever imagined it would. And it was lots of hard work, but so worth it. And there is even a cute little Easter egg on the bottom that you'll see right now. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. Thank you so much for being here. Take care, be well, and I'll see you soon.